it. Thank you so much, Anita. Welcome everyone. I can't believe it's already um, October 31st, Halloween. I've got my shirt ready for tonight to go trick or treating, but we're already thinking about Thanksgiving and families and getting together. So what better way to sort of maybe ease some family tensions than some humorous shirts? We're gonna walk through um, a slideshow and talk about some of uh, design ideas using Cricut Design Space and Cricut Access. And then we'll talk about the supplies you need uh, to make the shirt. And if you have the supplies handy, I wanna invite you to craft along with me when we get to that stage in Design Space and we will do the cutting and assembly of one shirt together. And then you'll have to make the rest for your family. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna dive right in. And again, if you all have any questions, we do have Anita on the back side um, in our Q&A, ready to answer any of your questions as we move through on iron-on materials or anything like that. So when I go ahead and share my screen, uh-oh, I don't see my presentation available. Let's see, sorry guys. Hmm. All right. Felicia, do I have the right settings to share my screen? Um, I am not exactly for sure, but I, you should be able to. Okay. I need to pause for a moment because it's not showing my, um, it's not showing anything for me to share. So Kesley, down on the bottom of the Zoom for the share screen, mm -hmm. you don't have the, the share screen green? It is green. Okay, if you click on the little up arrow to the right. Okay. Still green. But do you try have now. the advanced sharing options? Try now. Okay, let's try. No, it's still not letting me share any of my, um, I can share my screen, but it won't let me share my uh, PowerPoint mm -hmm. and my, see, there's my whole screen. I think everyone can see that. Oh, well, that's okay. You know what? I'll do, um, I will make that my presentation really big and then I'll just share it from there. Maybe while I do that, we can figure it out. Let's give it a shot, everybody. So I will share my screen and let's put those away and that away. Okay. So I won't be seeing your um, questions as I share my screen, but hopefully you can see my, my, um, my presentation here. So our Thanksgiving family shirts bring humor to the table. So this is just a, a way to ease some of that family tension and have t-shirts for your family that um, kind of gets everybody in, and you can make them unique, which is really fun about the shirts is you can make them specific for anybody in the family, sort of um, poke a little humor at everybody. Your supplies that you need to make a t-shirt are a blank t-shirt, iron on vinyl, an easy press or a home iron, an easy press mat and your Cricut cutter. So this is one of, um, this is a really fun shirt. Those rolls are homemade. I kind of feel like I need that one while I'm cooking. Now to make an iron-on shirt, there's three easy steps. The first step is designing your, your shirts. The second set is selecting your materials and cutting. And the third step is assembly. So that sounds pretty easy and Cricut does make it super easy in, the, in every aspect of the process. So the first one is design. Now you can go really easy and use a stock design that is already created in design space. So when you go into design space, you can do a keyword search. So I did a keyword search for Thanksgiving shirt and it comes up with over 6,000 different options for Thanksgiving shirts. And some of them are just, you can use these as jumping points to get started. Like there's the, these rolls are homemade. And that was the one I, I used right there um, from, for that first shirt you see at the beginning. But you can take the idea of the pumpkin and put in like grateful mom, grateful dad, grateful kid, um, hungry kid, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you want to put in to an image that's already sort of created for you. But if you want to be even a little bit more unique, you can design your own 
shirts using simply text and image combination. So I love this idea. Um, most likely two. So it's the superlatives of Thanksgiving. So who's most likely to talk about politics or bring pictures to the table or need to take a nap or, you know, feels like leftovers are for quitters. So you could take something that's unique and quirky about each family member or who's coming to your Friendsgiving or Thanksgiving and create a t-shirt for them with their superlative, most likely two. You could also use some canned um, Thanksgiving Day funny humor, uh, already things that are already created like uh, leg day. Again, this is just two types of fonts combined to create these. So um, a leg day, if you have someone in your family who really likes to work out or maybe who did the turkey trot, um, it's their leg day. If you have that that family member, the aunt who always brings the sides, I'll bring the mashed potatoes. She's the side chick. Um, grandpa could be I am legend and then pour some gravy on me. So just really fun ways to sort of lighten up the mood of Thanksgiving. This is also a great idea. I was told there would be fill in the blank. So you could grab any image um, like football or whiskey um, and use the, I was told there would be an insert an image with a word that goes along with that image. So I would told there would be leftovers. I would told there'd be Chinese food or, you know, so maybe somebody doesn't like turkey and they prefer ham. I was told there would be ham and you could take an image of a ham and insert that into there. And then you can also create um, images for your shirts that maybe aren't humorous, but that capture the whole family and capture the moment of the year. You may have had, um, we all haven't had very many family get togethers uh, in the past couple of years. So maybe this is the first time your family is getting together and you wanna just kind of capture it with a t-shirt that will remind everybody of the fun times that you had. So I loved this one, um, real simple. You can put your family name here. Um, Thanksgiving, maybe you do a turkey bowl or something like that. And you could use different font combinations and insert some images. And then this is always a popular one, let's get basted, uh, Thanksgiving of 2022. That let's get basted ideas everywhere. So this is sort of a fun way to incorporate that into a t-shirt for the whole family. Now, when you're talking about font combinations, I pulled the combinations of the fonts I used in the previous screens. If you want to write these down, uh, feel free. You can also, all those images I showed you previous the screens are part of my Cricut profile. So any of those shirts that you want to create, you can go into my Cricut profile and they're all there. I may not have shared them now that I think about that. Um, and I can show you how to share a project so you'll have all those. But these were just some really fun combinations that I thought worked really well together. Sometimes you can take a solid font and pair it up with a cursive font. You can do a font that's a little, you know, tall and skinny, like the thankful blessed with something that's a little bit shorter and squatter, um, something really very sharp corner, like the chip decor with paired with the Annie Lou and the curves really looks cute together. And then a similar style font like the Block Toys and Perfect Practice, but different line weights look work really well together. So these are just some of the font combinations that I tend to lean to or that I use frequently if you're um, looking for that. Now, the other part is how big do you make your design? So if we're talking about a family get together, you're talking about maybe toddler sizes all the way up to extra, extra large adult. And the size of your image will be different based on the size of your shirt. So if you were doing, let's say a little baby onesie, a, a three to six month old onesie, your image, you'd want it to be at most about four inches. Now, this is just a general rule of thumb. It's sort of my starting point. And then I launch from here and go, well, I think I could, given my design, I could go a little bit bigger or I want it a little bit smaller. But that most likely two 
type of design. Um, I would probably keep within these ranges for the adult size shirts, unless I were um, going bigger. I wanted it to be a bigger font. Now, when I measure, I measure across the chest at about the armpit level um, to get the maximum width I want of a shirt. So some shirts are bigger than others. They're maybe baggy, they, they may be a little bit roomier, or some shirts might have more of a slender cut to them. So use these as a jumping off point and then modify your size from here. Now I do say as a general guideline, again, I place my decal no about two to three inches from the neckline. So I'm sorry, two to three finger widths from the neckline. So I, I probably have a little bit thicker than normal fingers. My family says I don't have really, I have small hands, but not skinny fingers. Um, but my fingers are about an inch to two inches when they're together. So that's my general default is two to three inches from the neckline to get, um, to get the size. And I keep saying fingers, inches, I mean fingers. And I'll show you that when we go to the overhead so you can see it. So the second step in designing your project is your material. Cricut offers, oops, let's do Michael's t-shirts first. I grabbed a bunch of the Bella Canvas shirts for my family because they come in a lot of different colors. So I could do different colors for each family member. Maybe my brother's family would be one color. My family would be one color. Um, uh, my sister-in-law's family could be another color, or I can just mix and match within there. But I pulled out some of the um, fall colors here in the Bella Canvas t-shirts that are on um, in the Michael stores, and you can also get them online. And I don't know about you guys, but when it gets to the holidays and we get busy, that um, curbside pickup is awesome. Michael's also has the Cricut iron-on material. So Cricut iron-on material comes in a lot of different styles from everyday styles to some pattern designs. There's foil and holographic and there's glitter designs of iron-on. So really, there's a, you have a lot of options to go with your shirts. Today for the class, we said bring white. Now, oops, this is in the wrong spot. Okay. I'm gonna go over this because it's here in my presentation, but this pertains to once your image is designed before you iron it on, before you cut it, you need to mirror your image. So you've designed your image um, for your shirt and you're ready to cut it. So you want to mirror that image because when you put your material on the cutting mat, you actually put the material right side down, which is usually the shiny side, and then you're cutting in the back side of the material. So you actually have to flip this image around so that it cuts in reverse. And to do that, you're in your um, preview screen and you go down to the bottom here of each mat and you select mirror on each layer. And what that does is it actually flips the image around and mirrors that image on your material. Now, when it cuts, it will be cutting out of the reverse side of your material, the back side. Now, step three is the assembly. So once you've cut out your design, you're ready to assemble it. I'll be using the Cricut Easy Press 3, which is Bluetooth compatible. So I have the Cricut Heat app downloaded on my phone to use. If you don't have an Easy Press 3, maybe you have an Easy Press or an Easy Press 2, you can use the Cricut Heat Guide, which is also part of the Cricut Heat app. Sometimes we're by our computers and sometimes we're in another room when we're heating. So having that access right on your mobile device is super easy to use. And it tells you the heat setting for your Easy Press, how long to press, all of the steps if you have to preheat your garment, flip it over and how long, when you should peel your um, vinyl carrier sheet off of your design. All that is in the Cricut Heat Guide. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you how I use the Cricut Heat app married with the Easy Press 3. Now, if you're using a home iron, I do have some tips for that. First of all, um, I don't recommend doing 
iron on vinyl on an ironing board for two reasons. One is an ironing board can be a little bit wobbly. So if you need to put some pressure on your design, it, your ironing board can be wobbly. The second um, reason is your ironing board sort of have vents underneath. So cool air comes up from the bottom and you have the hot air coming from the top. The easy press mat gives you, it, it captures that heat. So you get heat from both sides. So as opposed to using an iron bo ironing board, I would even just take a terry cloth towel on your kitchen counter and use that over your ironing board. Now, if you are using a home iron, you want to use the highest setting and make sure that the steam is turned off. In fact, I would even dump out any water you have in your iron. And that's because you don't want any moisture in your shirt. So we preheat your shirt to remove any moisture from your shirt. And then you place your weeded image with the liner side up onto your preheated material. You want to cover it with a Teflon sheet or an ironing cloth. And then you apply medium pressure for 25 to 30 seconds. And that's for your everyday iron-on material. If you're using glitter iron-on, it may be a little bit different, but for your basic everyday iron-on, it's 25 to 30 seconds. And then you flip it over and apply heat on the back. And if you're using everyday, you want to cool when it is, you want to peel the lining piece off when it's cool to the touch. Now, like I mentioned, um, if you follow me in the Cricut Design Space app, this is my profile and I do share all of the projects we make in the class for you. So you can follow along um, with my profile if you'd like to and see what projects we're creating. And if you have questions that we didn't get answered in the class or um, you come up with a question after the class, you can always reach out to me on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. All right, so let me stop sharing there. So that is, now I can open back up my Q&A if you had any questions or if you, if you had any questions about any of that, I can answer those. It looks like Anita is answering questions as we go along. So why don't we go ahead and jump into design space and talk about some of our designs. So let me, I need to just get my design space large. Okay, I'm ready for that. So I'm gonna share my screen again and we'll go right into design space. Does the heat press mat go inside the shirt or under the shirt totally? Good question, Heather. I You put the heat press under the shirt um, if you're using infusible ink, you do want to put something inside the shirt, like a piece of cardstock or something, so that the infusible ink, if it were to come through your shirt, doesn't go to the backside of your shirt. But for um, regular iron-on material, you just put that, you put the easy press mat underneath your shirt, because then you're going to flip your shirt over and press from the back. So you don't need to slip it inside your shirt. But that's a good question. Okay. So in design space, we're going to come to the um, home screen. And from the home screen, you can create a new project. Now, I do have um, in my projects, I'm going to open up my projects and show you how to share a project if you're waiting for your design space to open up. So here are some of my Thanksgiving shirts here. I even have this thankful vibes one. And the shirt I'm wearing today is in here. So if we're, let's start with the most likely to talk politics. And I just need to make this public in design space. So when you design an image in a project in design space, you can share it with everybody in design space. So what that means is if you follow somebody's profile and they create a new project, you can see what they're creating and you can actually come in and customize a design of theirs for yourself. Um, so let me just show you that. Like, so if you see a project, and this is any project on Design Space, when you see a project and you click on it, you can say, make it as is, and click that make it button, or select customize. So for this one, we're going to customize because we want to make, you know, the most likely to design for um, your Thanksgiving. Now, most likely to pop talk politics, Ticks. I know that can be kind of a dangerous subject. So um, it, it's always kind of a fun thing to, um, to kind of put that on, to put that out there. Like who's the most likely to talk politics? 
um, or who's most likely to give away hugs or something like that, you can do that. Um, Lena, good question. Can you just share with one person? Absolutely. You can take copy the link of a project and share that with um, a person and say, hey, I made this shirt. If you want to make one, here's the link. And then they can they can answer that um, answer that call from you. So why don't we go ahead and make this one together? So the first thing we're going to need to do is make our first text box. And the first uh, text box is going to be the most likely two. So I'm just going to bring in a text box. And I went into the design panel, clicked on the text icon, and I got my text box. And then you just type in most likely two. Now, this one, I used that cursive font called Annie Lou. So I need to change my font. So I'm going to go to my font um, edit bar here. And from the drop down menu, I'm just going to, you can start kind of scrolling through and seeing what fonts you like. Um, I am looking for a cursive font. So I'm going to have this current button turned on. And current fonts are fonts that are designed um, to the spacing of the font is designed so that it's closer together. And what that does for you, so like if, I know we're going to use the Annie Lou font. So I'm going to type in Annie and there's the Annie Lou font. So because this font is current, it comes in and all the letters are touching each other as if it were written in cursive. So I can still see I have cut lines between each letter, but the words themselves look like they've been written in cursive. Now, once you um, find a font that you like, and for this one, for example, I would keep this most likely to um, the same for every shirt. What I don't want to happen when I send this to my machine is have it cut in between each letter. I want this word most to cut in one fluid motion. So the M, the O, the S, and the T, I want them all together. And you can see, I'm gonna go really big here. You can see there's a little black line in between each letter. And what that means is it would actually cut out each letter individually. So once you've got your, um, word written out or collection of words written out how you like them. You just want to go to the layers panel with your layer selected and down at the bottom here, this word combine. When you click on that and you have all these drop down choices, you would choose weld. And what weld does is it merges all of those layers together. So it becomes one layer and you no longer have the cut lines in between each individual letter. So each of these letters will um, cut together and the words will be three different words. Now, my size is going to be about a nine and a half inch shirt. So, oops, it's, uh, I made that too big. Let me change my width up here in the edit bar to nine and a half inches. Now, once I weld this font together, I can no longer change it. Um, once it's welded together, you can't go in and, and change your words or anything like that. So you want to make sure, yep, that's what I want. I want it to be welded and that's how I want it to look. And then you can add your um, talking point. Like what is this person most likely to do? So um, I, I know like we have somebody in our, our family who always asks for a doggy bag. So you might, your next one might be wants a doggy bag. And again, we're gonna change our font. So this time we're gonna go for something a little bit chunkier like this one. Now that gourd font is really cute. So let me clear that one and I'll show you this gourd font. It's kind of a fun one. It's called Gourd Season um, and it's a bit chunky, but it's a little bit too playful for, um, for how I want my shirt to look. So I'm gonna use that chipboard font and get just a nice sharp, um, nice sharp lines with the chipboard font. And I need to click off the kern because it's not a kern font. And there's the chipboard. Now you'll see it'll take, sometimes it might take a minute or so to um, change the font, but that's okay. So my most likely to, uh-oh. 
There we go. My most likely to, I made nine and a half inches. So I would make my wants a doggy bag to be nine and a half inches as well. So I'm just going to make that bigger. Now, how do you get it to line up perfectly with the most likely to and wants a doggy bag underneath, um, underneath it? So if you grab both of your layers like this, I've got both of my layers selected and I say align center horizontally, that lines it up on a horizontal line. So my up and down, it's lined up perfectly. And then I can just bring this down as far as I want it to go. So I might tuck that Y in between the wants up, which might take it off a little bit, but that's how, that's how I can do it. So this is most likely to want a doggy bag. And I need to change that from wants a to want. want most likely to want a doggy bag. <laughs> there we go. And let's just line that up again. So I select both layers and I align from the center. Now, if anybody else has um, any, other, any other sayings you want, you want to see me do, type those into the Q&A. I think our chat is just for us to share information to you, but you can type in the Q&A if there's another font you want to see another like saying you wanna see and then I'll save it with the project. Now you can see here where I have my Y on likely, it pushes down into that A. So if I left it as is, the um, I would have that cut line between the A and the Y, which I really don't, I don't care to have that. I'd like it to be all one, um, all one cutout. So again, I'm gonna grab all, oops, I don't want to move that one. I'm going to grab both of these layers and go to my layers panel and choose the combined drop down menu with um, weld right there. So now I don't have that uh, cut line. Okay, so th now this one is ready to go. And I would do this, um, I'm going to do this on white as a white um, vinyl design. And so I send it to my prepare screen. And I want to make sure I turn on that mirror. So I turn the mirror on and that's ready to go. And if I want to do the top politics, oh, this one. Okay, let me show you one other trick. This one, you see how the most likely to is now below the top politics. So if you didn't have to um, position your design so that the most likely to was not, you know, like, so my most likely to kind of cut into the want a doggy bag. This one, you don't have that. But when I sent it to my prepare screen, it changed the position of those letters. So then you could choose in your prepare screen. Sorry, it's like it's down here. You could choose in your layers panel, the attach. And attach holds things together like a stapler. So now when I send this over to my prepare screen, the most likely to talk politics is right in the same position as it was on my screen. And I didn't have to weld it together so I can always go in and change this as I want to later. But I'm just gonna do this one for this class now. So I'll mirror this and I'm ready to send it over to my machine to cut. Now my dimension is nine and a half inches. So while that might be great, I'm gonna check my shirt and make sure that nine and a half inches isn't too big or too large. So let me go ahead and share with you my overhead screen. And this will take us, it just pauses for one second. Okay, so I have a, a variety of iron-on vinyl. Um, I have a clay color that's nice. There's this, um, creamy color that works well, white or black. So depending on what color shirt you have, you may choose a different color vinyl to go with it. I always love this clay color as like a cream color. Um, I'm looking to see if it's on my shirt color today, but I may use that color instead of white, but maybe I'll use white instead. Um, okay, so let's see. So this is a, this orange color is a small shirt and this one is a large shirt. So let's just pull those two shirts here. And you can see the difference in the chest and why you need to measure the shirt that you're using. And you want to make sure that you have the right size decal for your shirt. So my small on top of my large, 
you see you have all this extra space on the side. So you want to make sure that your decal goes across the whole shirt. See that extra about two inches on each size? So my, so a, like a nine and a half size decal, let's get to nine and a half inches here on my ruler. So a nine and a half inch decal will fit nicely. It's, it goes from my this finger to this finger. That will fit nicely on the small shirt. But when I go to the large shirt, or even if you're doing extra, extra large, it might look a little small. So you could go, that's when I say like, you wanna go a little bit bigger. So you, you may wanna go as large as 13 inches. And it depends on also where the width of your design is. Our design is pretty much um, a box shape, but it's always good. Um, it's always good to kind of go over here on a baby shirt, most likely to drool. I like that drool for dinner. <laughs> I like that. Um, so that's that's kind of how my general rule of thumb in doing my measurements. So I might I'll start off with, you know, what what size do I normally do? Nine or nine and a half inches, eight inches. And then you can always change it up from there. So let's do this shirt here. I'll take the tag off. Now, I if I'm making um, shirts for other people, I definitely don't pre-wash my shirts. I just do my shirts um, straight from the store and let them wash it. And the reason I do that is because, you know, I may use a laundry detergent that they could be allergic to or something. So I do not pre-wash my shirts. If it's for a family member, you can always pre-wash it, um, especially if you maybe won't have time to wash it before the, before the event, but I don't usually pre-wash it. Some shirts you might feel like it's got a stabilizer in it and you might wanna wash it beforehand, but for the most part, you don't have to. So my design is nine and a half inches. So it will go about the most of the chest and then leave a little bit of room to go on the inside in the armpit. So I'm okay with that nine and a half inches. Now let's see what color I wanna do. Oh, is this, you know what? I think this, would this be better for a grandparent? What was my most likely to? I forget now. What was I gonna say? Most likely to want a doggy bag. Okay, that's fine. I could do this one. Um, so you could take, you know, the clay, a brown, a white, or a black. Kind of the black might look good on this orange color. Um, or if I were to do it, say on this shirt, on the green shirt, white might look really good on the green shirt. You know, and, and that would really help it pop out of there. Or even the clay would look good on the green shirt, which is kind of like an off-white color there. So I think I'm going to do the orange, maybe because it's Halloween, I'm feeling orange. I'll do my orange with, should I do yellow? I mean, should I do black or white? Anita, do you have a pin, an opinion or Felicia? I think both of those would look really good. I know. I think so too. Okay. I'm going to go with the white because the, the uh, black is kind of giving me pumpkin vibe, like pumpkin face vibes. And Heather says white. So I'm Heather said white. So I'm going with what Heather said. <laughs> All right, so let me go ahead and pull out my white vinyl and I'm going to do it in a small shirt so it can be um, the nine and a half inches. So I did pull out my vinyl. Now, if I were doing smart iron on material, I could just um, I could just load my material right into my machine and cut it because I have a, a maker three here to work with. But I'm going to use this is just regular everyday iron on material. So we're going to cut this into um, about a 10 inch by 10 inch amount here. So we're just going to go like this. And I use my paper trimmer to cut it down. So we'll just go over to about 10 inches. So it'll be 10 inches by 12 inches. And all said and done because it's 12 inches long. Um, now you'll notice it's a little bit harder to tell on this material, but the it has a shiny side and a dull side. We get another piece that has a better show. So this is iron on material. This is the dull side. And you can see this is the shiny side here. So when you place it on your mat, the shiny side is actually the carrier. Um, it's the clear plastic part. So when we place it on our mat, we want to go ahead and place it with the shiny side down 
and the matte side up. This is the back side of the material. The shiny side is the right side. So we're gonna place it down on our mat like that. Now I just need to send this over to my machine to cut. Let's say continue. I've got it mirrored, I'm double checking. You always, I, you know, I can't tell you how many times um, I have cut my iron on out and forgotten to mirror it or Mostly I forget to mirror it if something wrong happens wrong to it. Am I still sharing my screen? Am I still sharing my screen? Not your computer screen. You are showing the mat with okay. your machine. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I've got my mat side up, shiny side down. I load it in and I'm ready to go. Now, I, you may have noticed I used my brayer. And this thing is great. I use my brayer uh, to put, make sure my material is down on my mat, on my cutting mat. Um, so it, it holds it in place and it doesn't slide around. If you don't have a brayer, that's okay. You can use your hand, you can use a credit card, something soft um, to, you wanna make sure that it stays down on your mat. And if your mat isn't as sticky as you'd like, maybe you've used it a bunch, maybe you forgot to put your plastic cover piece back on it, you can always keep your mat tidy. I just use these baby wipes here. They're alcohol free uh, and they're no fragrance. So I just use these um, if I have forgotten to put my cover back on, on my mat. And, um, and it just keeps your mat clean and fresh. So that's what I use there. Now, while this is cutting, I'm gonna show you in our, let's see, I'm gonna pull over my, I don't need, I'm trying to think what I need and what I don't need right here in front of us as we're working. So let me grab my easy press. I have the 12 by 10 inch easy press here to work with today. Okay, and I want to make sure I don't get it stuck in my mat here. So now what I can do with my easy press is I can use it on my, with my phone. So I just need to turn it on. And you'll notice it has like a little Bluetooth um, icon on the bottom of it. So it'll let me know that the Bluetooth is connected. And then you go in and you select from the app, you select which machine you're using and you say, start a new project. And from here you select your material transfer. So I'm using smart iron on and I'm putting it on a 100% cotton shirt. And now I send it over to my machine. And once I say send settings to press, it will start heating up my machine. Now, if you don't have the Easy Press 3, you can still use the Cricut app. All you need to do is go in here where it says open heat guide. I don't know if you can see it. Let's say I'm better off down lower. Oops. So when you say open heat guide, let's see if I can get this closer for you guys. There we go. Oops. Okay, so when I click on the open heat guide, it opens up the website and you can choose which machine you have. If you have the Easy Press 2 or the Easy Press, and you can choose your material settings here, and it will walk you through um, if, this is, if you're doing like an everyday on 100% cotton and you're using the Cricut pressing mat and you say apply. It gives you your, your step-by-steps. You preheat for five seconds, 315 degrees for 30 seconds, firm pressure and flip over for 15 seconds. So it gives you all those um, steps right here in the app, which I just, I love that. It's such a, it's such a time saver because, you know, we, you forget sometimes are you, you're doing five things at once and you get a little distracted. So, um, so you don't necessarily remember, oh yeah, I've got to, preheat my garment and oh I've got to do this and I've got to do that so I'm going to send over those um, settings to my machine and it's already ready to go it's been heating up <laughs> and then I'm going to set this aside for a second um, the easy press too if you don't have an easy press um, they're very I, I love them because it's very safe so it has a base that comes with the um, easy press and it's like the safety base there. Um, it does not get hot. Like, so I can, even when I have it on the hottest setting, it won't get hot on me. So I can put my hands on it and everything. 
and not worry about it. Now the face does definitely heat up and it also, um, oops, this is a little bit shorter than I needed. It, it heats up and it also, um, the face of it heats up, but the cool thing about the face of it and the way that it heats up is it heats up around the entire face of the iron. So like when you're using your home iron, your home iron center can get hotter than the outside edges of the iron. Um, so when you press with it, it doesn't necessarily give you an even press all the way across your garment. On your easy press, not only does it give you the easy press all the way around your garment, it also um, has gives you the same pressure around your um, easy press. Okay, so now I'm just, I took a little corner of my iron-on material here and started peeling back. And I'm just going to be revealing my design as I go here. So I just kind of, I notice I pull it like at 45 degree angles and sort of I'm walking it off the carrier sheet here. So it just pulls off. And this is a good time as I'm um, weeding. If anybody has any questions or anything, um, this is a good time to answer these live too. Here we go. And I think I, I read recently that doggy bags is, um, more of an American thing than other countries don't really do doggy bags. I thought that was interesting. So that kind of made me laugh to do this shirt. <laughs> All right. You could also have, um, I know my husband, when we were uh, young, he used to wear a baseball hat all the time to the dinner table. So you could say most likely to wear a hat <laughs> at table. Um, most likely to be thankful would be another one. You know, the person who's like, oh, be thankful for this or be thankful for that. Really showing their gratitude um, would be fun. Most likely to carve the turkey would be another good one. Um, let's see. Most likely to tell a joke. Let's keep going around. So I'm just gonna keep weeding. As you I can go. also do most likely to be late. Oh yeah, I'm sure we all have somebody who would wear that one. <laughs> or most likely to leave early. Most likely to eat all the pie. Most likely to bring pie. Oh, you don't wanna give put pressure on anybody to bring a pie, right? I was going to say, you could also do most likely to avoid the vegetables or, <laughs> you know, if someone has a food dislike. That is good. Most likely to, or what about most likely to, um, what is that green bean casserole? Uh, it's, that's what it's called. Is that green bean casserole. Yeah. I have never been a fan of that. Me neither. <laughs> My poor husband, if he wants it, he's got to cook it. Most likely to eat Brussels sprouts. Oh, okay, so I can show you where the link is when you want to share just your um, just your project with one person. I can show you where that is in Design Space once we get this all heated up. All right, so now I've got this all weeded out. If you're crafting along with me, you're you're all weeded out too. So that looks really cute. And then what I do is I just fold my design in half to find the middle of my design. So I just fold it in half like that and I find out where my middle is. And then I take my shirt and I need to find the middle of my shirt. So this is where the that five minute press comes in. It's really handy. So I'm gonna take my easy press pad and I'm gonna take my shirt and I fold my shirt in half along the front. And I press this for five seconds. And I do that because I want that center line on my shirt to help me line up my design. So it's sort of a little bit of a cheater way, but I'm just gonna put that right there and I'll bring over my easy press and I just hit the green button and it goes and my app, my window shut down for me. My app will, um, okay, so now my blank is preheated. 
So I can take that off and open my shirt up. I'll bring that back so you guys can see that as it goes along. Then I just open my shirt up. And as I mentioned before about those two to three fingers from the neckline, I just put my fingers on the neckline and either go down about two and two fingers or three fingers. And that kind of helps me get my position from the neckline. I also in design space made my own um, guide and you can, I have this project, it's shared. So if you go in my design space, you can grab it. And I line it up with the collar and you can see it is about two fingers down when that goes on. So if I line it up with the collar, it's about two fingers down. And that is where I would start lining up my design right about there. Now, if I wanted to, I would, if this is like your first time doing a shirt, you might want to measure. So you can go from your left side and measure to your armpit and then go to your right side and measure to your armpit and make sure that you're lined up and that you're lined up along the bottom as well. Okay, and so now I've got my design on. It's positioned properly. I'm happy with my positioning. And then I'm going to just grab my easy press again. I bring it over and I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Now it says press, apply firm pressure. So firm pressure to me is like holding my hands on it, putting a little bit of weight in it. Um, it's just not lightly holding it, but it's also not breaking my table. <laughs> so that'll just heat up and then it'll tell me my next step once I'm done with that, which is really fun. Because the next step is like almost the last step. So here we go here. So now it tells me it's done. I move that over and it says um, flip and press for 15 seconds and apply firm pressure. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it on your camera, but on my on the actual shirt itself, the color has changed a bit because uh, the heat has changed it to um, a little bit darker orange color, but it will go away once it cools. So I just, again, apply my firm pressure for 15 seconds. And then we're, we're good to go. Now, while this one's cooling, well, this shirt's cooling because you want to cool when peel. So it'll tell me peel when cool. So I'm going to let this shirt cool a bit before peeling it. So I'm just going to set this one aside. But I have another shirt that I have everything cut out. And I want to show you if you wanted to do more. Uh oh, oh, look at that. The little scrap ironed on there, which is no problem because that's the downside of the, the right side, I guess, of the vinyl. So this shirt I have actually washed um, and we're just gonna press it. I'm gonna press it for about five seconds and do the heat up. And then I wanna show you uh, the lay how to layer vinyl. So if you wanted to use more than one color and you were kind of overlapping your vinyls, how would you do that? So let's go through those steps next. So again, I'm just gonna do a little preheat of my shirt and get my fold line here. The shirt's a little wrinkly, isn't it? So I'm just gonna kind of watch it for about five seconds and get that preheat going. So this time I'm not using the app um, because, I, oops, because I'm going to be layering my pieces and I don't need to have the, um, I don't need to have use all the heat at one time. So I'm going to do a light press as I move along on the design. And here's my design here, the Anderson family Thanksgiving. So I've got the turkeys, one piece of vinyl, the platters, another piece of vinyl, and then I have the leaves that are falling on the shirt here. So let's grab our centering guide here. I can feel that's about three fingers down. And then I'm going to find the middle first of my design. I'm going to peel these things off. I kind of have it all layered on top of each other so I could see what I had going. So I just find the middle of my design again. Oop, oop. And this is my first layer here, the Anderson Thanksgiving. Now, that's a little bit low because this is kind of a, a smaller shirt. So I'm going to go up just a smidge. Let's see, I'm gonna go up like that big. 
So there's my two fingers. So this, this shirt does tend to run a little bit smaller for me. So that's how that's going to go. And then when I, I'm ready, my leaves are going to go on next, but I can do either the turkey or the platter with the other piece. Because if I put the turkey and platter here, I can put the turkey on top of it. So it doesn't, it doesn't get in the way. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do the turkey first. I'll do the turkey along with the black. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to bring this up and take my turkey and get him positioned in the center right there. Let me just find my center of my turkey and line that up right on there. Now, if these were overlapping, if my carrier sheet were overlapping or would go into the other part portion of the design, I would not do that. I would do each layer separately. But because that color so that still lines up because that is um, underneath where the carrier sheet is, the turkey will adhere to the shirt along with all my black fonts and lettering. So this is, I'm gonna do these two layers and then I'll do the leaves and the plate next. But now if I were doing this, I would do it for 30 seconds. I'm gonna do my time for just about 20 seconds. And so I hit okay. And I'm not going to turn it over because I'm gonna let it cool for a minute before I peel it off. And then I'll do my other layer. So, oops, I didn't start it. <laughs> oops, look at that. Okay, so um, I don't want to, I don't wanna peel, I don't, um, don't wanna like overheat it, which I probably have now because of my air is there. <laughs> um, I just wanna lightly press the first layers down. And then since I'm doing another press on top of that, then I'll, I'll press it all like in one go, if that makes sense. So while that's cooling, let's grab this shirt, my most likely to, and I can begin to peel this back. Now, if for any reason my um, vinyl didn't adhere, I could go back and hit that spot. If it didn't adhere somewhere, I could go back and touch that up, get the corner of it, use a, a press pad on it. And there we go. The thing you don't want to have, you don't want to press so much that the, that the texture of your shirt comes through to your design. So there we go. Most likely to want a doggy bag. I love that. Yeah, you could do, Lena says, my husband always falls asleep after he eats. You could do um, most likely to need a nap. It could be your Thanksgiving superlative. So here we go. Now I'm just gonna very carefully check this and make sure it's mostly adhered, which it is. So that's a good thing. If it comes up a little bit, like I can see it's coming up a little bit at the bottom of my H, but I'm okay with that because I'm going to come back to it. My A is coming up a smidgy. I just want to make sure I don't stretch any of my vinyl that's not adhered down all the way. Okay, so we're just going to walk this off very carefully. Like that. Looking cute, looking cute. So you can see my A here. I don't know if you guys can see it, is not adhered down all the way. Like I said, that's okay because I'm going to come back and hit it again with some more heat on the second layer. So here we go. There's that one. There's my turkey. All right, so now I'm just gonna make sure that's, pre that's able to get pressed down. And I have my plate here. Now, I don't like to have my vinyl touching up against my other vinyl. So I'm gonna trim this platter down really close to the edge. And the reason I don't like to have one vinyl layer overlapping into another vinyl layer is um, I don't want to get a line on my shirt. So I've got that there. And I want to make sure that this, your vinyl carrier sheet isn't going to interfere with my next layer of my design. So I'm going to put that right there. There's this little, little plate. There's me a friend. 
And then now this is gonna go on top. So you can position this, you know, however you want. This will go into my letters a little bit. So I could, um, I could come back oops, if I wanted to, and I could just cut these off <coughs> like this. So if you didn't want to, you could um, cut them all individually and then just place them on your shirt. So you've got that like that. So I'm just gonna cut down a little bit. Sorry guys, I should have pre-cut these a little bit. But I I have found I've um, had my carrier my second layer vinyl carrier sheet um, leave a mark on design sometimes so that's just what I'm trying to avoid here by trimming these a little bit so I can just put those right there and that fits in the middle and then my other leaves are going to go up top here and again I can cut these and if you want to save on your vinyl you can just cut these really small on your um, machine and then that would save you having to cut out bigger pieces of it like that. But there we go, I'm gonna put that like that. Now, because I have um, iron-on material exposed, I don't wanna just put my um, easy press on top of that. I want to put a Teflon sheet or an ironing cloth or something on top of that so that it doesn't touch my easy press pad. Then I'm gonna change my temp, my time to, is it 20? I may have to, I may leave it at 20 seconds. Let's just check. Um, so 20 seconds was when I flipped it over. So 30 seconds is my time. So I'm gonna do it for 30 seconds here. So bring it back. So I used my app and the heat guide to get exactly how long to press this. 30 seconds with firm pressure. Can use that firm pressure, get your mus muscle workout somewhere, right guys? You'll also notice I don't move my easy press around. So once I have it positioned on my shirt, I don't push it back and forth or anything like that. That can create shadowing. So I just put it down and I give it that nice firm pressure and I hold it there. So if you're using a home iron, you wanna go with the same approach and just have the um, have it press in that way. Okay, so let me just get the back here. So I'll do the back for 15 seconds. So I'll change my time down to 15 seconds. We'll bring that over and we'll apply that firm pressure for 15 seconds and then I let it cool again. And then I can peel it off and everything will stick and look so cute. All right, two, one, there we go. And then I just, I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit. So while this is cooling off, I'm gonna come back over to my main picture. And if anybody had any, I know we're, we're like just about out of time, oops. So if anybody had any last questions that you needed to answer, uh-oh, failed to start the camera, okay. I was going to say, Kesley, yeah. it would also look really cute to have that family design on the back and then have the personalized most likely two on the front. Oh, that would be cute. Oh, I like that idea. Let's see if it's, oh, it's for some reason it's not switching over back to my main camera. So that's okay. I'm going to share, um, I'm going to share my screen one more time. And I want to show you all the, somebody was asking about when they share a project, um, how to share it to everybody. So let me answer that question. And then, um, and then we'll peel off the shirt. So let's see. Okay. So you should be able to see my design space here. When you, um, so first I'm going to save my project and it's called most likely to. So I'm going to save that. Then when I go to my projects, if I just wanted to share a project to one person, so let's say this is the Anderson family shirt I made, and I think my sister could make it too, I can, um, I can edit project details. So any, any project details you want to edit in here, you go ahead and edit them, and then you say save, and the share 
icon here, you share that, and it will allow you there to say, just do you want to share it outside of Design Space by copying the link? So this will allow you to share it with just somebody who owns the link, and you don't have to share it publicly in Design Space. If you want to share it publicly in Design Space, you just click right there, and boom, I love the graffiti. You can um, share it publicly in Design Space. Okay, so now let's go back over here to this last camera. Okay, let's just peel this one off so you can see all the, all the parts of this one. So I've got my leaves here. Come right off, look at that. And then my little turkey platter comes right off. And if you if you had it overlapping, that would be okay. You'd be able to feel the bump there, but it would be fine and it would wash just great. You'd be fine. So there we go. Our most likely Anderson family Thanksgiving. So if you have a whole lot of stuff planned, um, you've got lots of fun shirts to share with everybody and, and make shirts for the family. Um, if you do make these, please do share them with uh, Michael's. Cricket with Michaels uh, is our hashtag. We, I would love to see what you make and love to see how they how they turn out. So I'm sorry I can't wave goodbye to you guys. Um, thank you so much, and don't forget to fill out the survey. And this class is being recorded, so if you're ready to make shirts for your family, you can re uh, pause and stop the recording. But thanks everybody for being here today. <laughs> bye bye.